It's been 17 years since the last Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi game, but Spike Chunsoft has returned and is continuing the series with the original Japanese subtitle, Sparking. Dragon Ball Sparking Zero is a 3D arena fighter with some of the most beautiful, fluidly animated anime aesthetics to date, and it's all in HDR. The game has two control types, standard and classic controls. Classic controls try to mirror the classic Budokai Tenkaichi controls as best as it can with some minor changes to bring it up to speed with the current gameplay mechanics. Standard has a more ergonomic control scheme that is far more accommodating to the new system mechanics. It's worth noting that when quick time events happen, classic controls require you to rotate the analog stick while standard just requires you to hit the button. Good luck avoiding analog stick drift if you play on classic. Hopefully Spike Chunsoft decides to patch the controls so classic players can avoid damaging their expensive analog sticks. What has evolved from the previous Budokai Tenkaichi games are the additional mechanics using the skill count allowing you to access techniques to shift the gameplay dynamics in both offensive and defensive strategies. Skill count builds on its own over time or very gently by performing certain actions. They allow you to shift the tides of battle in your favor by using abilities such as Super Perception, a parry-like move, or a Revenge Counter, a combo breaker-like skill to mitigate your opponent's damaging combos. <laughs> There are plenty of other skill count consuming moves for you to learn depending on the situation at hand and your personal playstyle, and there are plenty of character specific ones too. Every character has two specific skills that consume a set amount of skill count depending on how effective they are. The skill count is also used for your transformations. When transformed, many of your characters will have slightly different combo strengths and often new super moves. Not only that, but when changing forms, you have access to new skills. You can enter sparking mode when you charge up your key to 200% at the cost of one skill count. Sparking mode prevents certain key consuming techniques from draining your meter. One of the advantages of this power up is the hyper smash, which has the opportunity to break your opponent's guard. A powerful upgrade you now have access to is violent rush, which lets you melee your opponent indefinitely until your sparking mode runs out, but be careful not to misuse it at certain instances. You will be burnt out until your key is fully recovered. When in sparking mode, certain strings are cancelable into your ultimate attack, such as ending a string with the up rush launcher, step dash afterwards into rush, rush chain, cancelled into an ultimate attack. The combat is extremely fast paced and feels extremely direct and committal instead of a loose and smooth type of game. The combos only come out if you press the button before the initial input lands, so there are no slow and deliberate actions when trying to confirm your hits. Your strategy feels far more premeditated than anything else, almost like a NetherRealms game like Mortal Kombat and their dialogue combo. At least that's how it feels when you're on the offensive. On defense, the mechanics are far more lenient when having to react to your opponent's attack but masterful timing drastically improves the effectiveness of your defensive options. But be careful with the combo breaker, as there is a direct counter to it, costing you two skill count in the process and your opponent being able to continue their combo even further beyond. There are no guard cancels like in the dims developed Xenoverse or Budokai games. If there's something I'm not a fan of with this combat, it's the lack of being able to cancel strength and branch off into one another to create your own combos on the fly. Despite this personal criticism of mine, there are certain rush chains that have ginormous amount of hit stop that allow you to link together different strings into a combo. To prevent an infinite combo from happening with these moves, repeating a rush chain will cause the opponent to fly out of your combo. Here is one of the big problems with the game for me. Certain characters will have repeat rush chains, limiting their combo options. For instance, Future Trunks has two different rush chain moves. Someone like Goku has a different chain for every hit of his rush attack, which means he has like four of them giving him way more options than trunks and way more combo opportunities. Then again, this game isn't even a week old, so the complaints can be extinguished as the meta evolves. It's worth noting that you're unable to block from behind, so watch your tail. With that said, the amount of escape options even during combos means you should be able to return from being pummeled as long as you have the resources to do so. The game is a team-based game where you can switch and combo into a teammate if you so wish. Every character has a certain amount of points designated to them, with their transformations often requiring more points to be put on the team. You have 15 points in total to balance your roster. When it comes to modes, you can play online in ranked or custom matches, a tutorial where you can learn about the mechanics and watch videos on how to perform them. Although, to me, I think the tutorial is a bit lacking and the information a bit too sparse. 
there's even a traditional training mode for you to get your bearings with a new character. But even here, the training mode options leave so much to be desired. I wish there was an option for the CPU to block after the first hit or recover after being launched so I can tell if these combos are likely to work in a real fight or not. For local matches, you're limited to only fighting in the hyperbolic time chamber. And on PC, you can even change the graphical settings specifically for local matches, but still only the hyperbolic time chamber. You can even have online tournaments in their designated mode, but even more fun in the offline tournament modes. The tournaments have slightly different gimmicks that allow you to earn goodies upon completion like characters or zenny. Speaking of zenny, you can use them to purchase characters, skills, outfits, and plenty of other goodies. Sadly, not every character shows up in the shop to buy initially. It looks like the higher you raise your player level, the more items you have access to in the shop. So, if you don't want to play the story mode to unlock characters and outfits, you can simply play the game and earn enough experience in Zenny to buy them eventually. Not only that, but you can summon Shenron that gives you even more items. The skills you purchase can upgrade a certain aspect of your character's damage, but there are bigger skills that have certain drawbacks, or unique skills that change the options your characters have, like having extra attacks during certain combos, or how the skill gauge regenerates. Moving on to one of the bigger advertisements of the game, and sadly a slight disappointment, is the story mode in my opinion. You start off playing the battle with Raditz as Goku, but after this, you're free to leave and select any of the 8 character scenarios. Alongside Goku, you can play as Vegeta, Gohan, Piccolo, Future Trunks, Frieza, Jiren, and Goku Black. Here comes one of the game's biggest weaknesses, its cutscenes. Most of them are just slideshows and some even lack voice acting. The iconic scene of Krillin dying by Frieza's hands, cornering Goku to channel his rage into becoming the legendary Super Saiyan. An iconic scene like this dedicated to mostly just being stills, like seriously? It's just a fun little diorama instead of an epic animation like it deserves. I think the brat should go next. You! You! Ruthless! Heartless! Bastard! Go! Take Piccolo with you and get out of here now! A fun little tidbit is that during a fully 3D animated cutscene, you can move the right analog stick to watch it in first person. You know, so you can go, please step on me daddy? Despite the criticism, the story mode does have a major draw to it the what-if scenarios, and the sparking episodes. There are what-if scenarios the game asks you to choose such as fighting Raditz alone without Piccolo's aid, who you defeat before meeting Captain Ginyu changes who his partner is, or defeating Frieza without the spirit bomb, preventing Namek from exploding, and Goku never becoming a Super Saiyan in the first place as Krillin is still alive. On the rare occasion a cutscene has a bit of love and care sprinkled on them, I find most of this attention to detail is during the sparking episodes, the biggest reason to play the story mode is Sparking Zero, where a single change in the story has a butterfly effect and drastically affects how the story unfolds. Sadly, these fights aren't for the faint of heart. The unlock conditions tend to be quite difficult if you aren't accustomed to the battle system. If you lower the difficulty of the story fights, the game locks you from activating these Sparking episodes. Goku's Sparking episode is with the first fight of the game when you accept Piccolo's help. If you can defeat Raditz before he's done charging a special beam cannon, the timeline alters to Goku never dying from his kamikaze into Piccolo's attack. If you need help with these, I suggest going to sparking mode and landing Violent Rush into about 19 hits and cancel the end of it into your ultimate attack for about 2 health bars worth of damage. And when it comes to giants, the tutorial tells you to run away and zone them out from afar. Trust me, you're going to want to embark on unlocking the sparking episodes to see the actual good content in the single player mode. I'm just a little sad to say that this content may not be accessible to people who don't want to put in the effort to get good, which is perfectly acceptable if I'm being honest. Well then it's time for me to conclude this battle, and you'll be reunited with your friends in one more painful moment. What? That's enough! A fun little addition to the game is the custom battle mode, where you can create or partake in other players' custom fights with unique win conditions and home-baked cutscenes. 
You can use any asset and pre-made animations up to 5 times per scene with a good amount of pre-written dialogue to make your dream scenarios come to life. Sadly, the dialogue isn't voice, but there are so many little adjustments you can make to ensure your dreams fight are a reality. I can totally see people just making the cutscenes without any dialogue options and using a video editor to add their own subtitles to these characters. Maybe even their own voices to add a little atmosphere into the mix. Oh, I've been waiting for this. Which one of you idiots will give me a good fight? In the end, even with the small instances of Spike Chunsoft having to take shortcuts to get the game out, the frantically fast, no room to breathe combat and creative what if scenarios are a love letter to Dragon Ball fans everywhere. It's Kappa. Uh, please, I can't take it anymore. Holy crap, Beast Kappa's far too powerful for me. I gotta get out of here if I value my life. Let's read something. See you around. 